Have you ever been in a meeting where someone has asked you to present a KPI or a calculation that you really didn't prepare for? Well, luckily, Quora can help you create that on the fly in a matter of a couple of clicks. With that, welcome back to the Quora series. In this video, we will show you how to perform ad hoc aggregations and some simple calculations as well in your data. Fear not, we're going to go into more complex calculations as well down the road, but let's take this step by step. So imagine you have a base analysis and you really want to expand on that in order to meet the request. Well, in our case, this might be the analysis that we started off in the last video, the flight cancellations at SkyWest Airlines. So now what we want to do is we want to dive in deeper and figure out which routes and which airports have been most affected by cancellations. And that's really something that we need to aggregate our data for. Let's go. In order to do this, we could search for all routes that are related to the flight object set, the same one that we have been using for our visualizations earlier. However, since we previously cleaned up our canvas and have removed the intermediary steps from our view, we will need to resurface those first. Remember that analysis lineage is a core concept in Quiver, and that out of sight really does not mean lost. There are multiple ways to retrieve the object set with all cancelled flights. One possibility is to open the analysis content sidebar and add our object set temporarily back to the canvas. Keep in mind that you will probably want to hide it again when you clean up your canvas at the end of the analysis. Another possibility to retrieve the object set would be to navigate to the dependency graph and locate the cancelled flights object set that we created earlier and just start another search round from there. Personally, I do like the path via the dependency graph because especially when the analysis grows, I can ensure that I'm selecting exactly the right object set to start my chart. In order to familiarize with this data, we should open up a table that will show us some of the roots columns. We could also configure this table and show more or less object properties or remove the checkbox from the left hand side to make it view only. When looking at the table, I can see that there is a property called flight count, which in this example is a pre-calculated aggregate of how many flights have been realized across this route. Let's use this. So in order to get a first overview of how many flights are performed across each route, let's create a bar chart. Since in this data set, one row represents one route, a simple row count won't get us very far. So instead, let's take the sum of the flight count grouped by the root name. We could now also create another bar chart representing the number of cancellations for each route. However, that might be a really biased metric. Routes with few flights might appear to be more heavily affected than routes with a large number of flights. Therefore, we should rather calculate the cancellation rate. So in order to do this, let's first duplicate the bar plot we just created and give our new bar chart a different name. We'll call it cancellation rates by route. Now let's actually calculate the cancellation rate. In the chart editor, we can switch to the formula metric tab and write some simple aggregation logic. In order to do this, First, we'll define our two variables, the sum of the flight count and the sum of the number of cancellations, all grouped by the root name. Now we can just simply divide the number of cancellations by the flight count and then multiply the result by 100 to get the percentage. The formula metric also supports some selected formulas which come out of the box and which we can use in order to round our final metric and make it more readable. So let's use the round function here as well. Now by looking at routes with the highest cancellation rates, it seems as if some airports are more often concerned than others. If we remember from our earlier analysis, weather might play a hefty role in cancellation events. 
So let's dive deeper into the origin and destination airports to narrow down our root cause analysis. To do this, we would like to see the same bar chart segmented by both the origin and destination airports instead of the root names. Luckily, we don't have to duplicate our work. So we can just take the bar charts, duplicate those, and then just adapt the segmentation. So in this example now, instead of grouping by the root name, we will group by the origin and the destination airports respectively. Let's put these charts side to side to get a better overview. And now we should probably also change the display color of one of the bar charts to better distinguish the two. So in this example, let's take blue for the origin airports and red for the destination airports. As you can see, however, the Y axes are not automatically aligned yet. In order to rank the airports, by highest cancellation rates overall, whether they are origin or destination, let's now overlay both charts and make out which airports are actually affected the most. Okay, now we can again clean up our analysis and keep only our more information dense overlay chart. For SkyWest Airlines, we can now clearly see that there is one specific airport notably the Mammoth Yosemite Airport, which is at the origin of most cancellations overall. We could now also go ahead and select any other airline at the top of our analysis and see how all of our charts automatically update to reflect that change. For instance, if we look at Delta Airlines, they might experience more cancellations at LaGuardia Airport. Awesome. So now we've been able to figure out which routes and airports are most affected by cancellations by means of the cancellation rate that we calculated. Now what we would like to do is actually turn this analysis into a dashboard for more non-technical users to consume as well. We have two videos coming up that will help you do that. In the first video, we will focus on the dependency graph, which is an extremely powerful tool to help you refactor your entire analysis. And I know we've touched upon this very briefly in this video as well. So I would recommend watching this one first. And then we have a video on how to actually parameterize your analysis. Have a look at both. See you there.